All right, welcome to the Free Scotty Podcast, the only fake podcast that discusses Scott Trethaway's uh, shenanigans with the people that has actually experienced them. I am your host, Donna Krieger, Allentown High School, class of 1989, and uh, I'd like to start first by welcoming our guest today. So I'm just going to go from my left here, which is uh, Mr. Aaron Heller, class of 1988. I think I think you went by Schnoz back in the day. Is that correct? Well, that that tended to be what I got called a lot. I have no idea why. You have no idea. Why. <laughs> All right, and then we have Stacy Frankie Frankel. I just made that up, Stacy, because you didn't give me a nickname. Uh, class of 1988. That's about it. That was it. And that's, Brian that's... Rosie Penrose, class of 1988. Right. That's it. Yeah, 19. Yep. And then we have uh, Thomas Cal Falkowski, our Hall of Famer. How you doing? Good. Thank you, Mr. Quarterback. Excellent. And then finally, but certainly not least. That's right. Mr. Christian Serbies. And I believe you went by Serbs. I now go by Coach Serbs. Please, coach uh... Serbs. <laughs> That's right. You are the coach of the Allentown, the mighty Allentown uh, Redbirds football team. Go Big Red. Go Big Red. Chris, go Big Tom, Red. and I are all class of 1989. So welcome. I appreciate you guys taking some time uh, to be with us. To, with us, I'm talking about us like there's someone here with me. It's me. It's just me. So thank you for being here today. Um, I'm going to start first, if you don't mind, with Stacy. Put you on the oh, hot no. seat. If that's the best okay. Goes first. We're, we're just going to talk. Well, well, first, well, let let's go back a little bit and talk about exactly why we're here tonight. So, one of the shenanigans that um, Scott Scotty Trethaway is known for, and and really what has brought us all here together to do this fundraiser, is the um, what I like to call the the one where he moons his classmates at graduation. Are you familiar with that? The, so 35 the great years ago, the 1988 graduation, in a last ditch effort to make his classmates laugh, he decided to moon. So this episode actually, ironically, is called um, Moon Over Graduation, the first and only <laughs> episode. Uh, but before I let start talking to um, Stacy here, I do want to say that we um, do not endorse mooning. It is 2023. Okay, that is not okay. Um, it is very offensive. But back in 1988, it's kind of funny. So Stacy, you are one yeah. of his oldest and dearest friends. Let me ask you, when was it that you first, What? when did you first meet Scotty? <laughs> uh, okay, so if we're going to put a date to this, I want to say it was like 1975, 76. We were class playmates, I guess, in nursery school in East Windsor. And we just kept following each other uh, through elementary school, through middle school. I had moved in the beginning of high school to Millstone and to Allentown, and then we reconnected there. Wow. So you pretty yeah. much, you've known him the entire time. Let me ask you. The entire time. Was he considered um, a, a troublemaker in preschool, in nursery school? <laughs> Probably. Did he, did he have a tendency to pull his pants down and moon people? <laughs> Actually, yes. Um, you know, <laughs> it, it was how we got his attention. And, uh, you know, the teachers just bribed him with cookies and juice and, and nap time and he was fine. But he was a good kid. I, I, really I'm pretty sure that, that you can still bribe him yeah. with cookies and juice. I'm pretty sure some we still bribe different, kind of, different kind of juice now. <laughs> He was a good kid. You know, he was a really good person. He was always super friendly, always smiling, always saying hi. I mean, he was just a genuine good friend to have. So I don't know what happened and where he went wrong, but <laughs> there was no mooning in elementary school. That's good. <laughs> so since you mentioned that he was a good kid, I'm just going to um, bring up real quickly, just so everybody knows who we're talking about. And if you just bear with me just a moment, I'm gonna gonna get up the uh, the picture of of Scotty here. And uh, not that picture. What? 
Hopefully not the picture of him doing the deed. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. You know, these, these kids are going to be watching this program here. You're throwing up X-rated no, picture. No, 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 no. Ready? I guess this is, Donna. It's in the mood. Oh, yeah. There he is. There he is. Yeah, there he is. So how did, how did this go here? How did this go from uh, nursery school to this guy to... Uh, <laughs> I, I have pictures from our time in Busy Bee. I just have to find them. They are in a box in an album in someone's house, but we're going to find them. You're going to find them. <laughs> we're going to find we them. Can use that somehow. <laughs> All right. I'm going to turn it over to um, some of his former teammates, which are the four of you guys, because I certainly, I, I was the football manager and I actually didn't, uh, you know, play. I was a quarterback for the Powder Puff football team, but that was the extent of it. So, um, who wants to go first? How did how who who met who met Scotty first? Probably Aaron. I would say Aaron. Uh, maybe. Aaron here? Yeah, that that makes sense, I guess. Or right around the same time, Aaron. Probably right. <laughs> yeah, we're the elderly of the group. You're no the doubt. elder. Yeah, that's yeah, the, the more, elder of the group. What, yeah. In detention? Yeah. Was it in house? <laughs> I didn't I know we did not meet in detention or in house, I don't think. I don't I don't remember the day, but uh I, I can tell you this. Scotty Scotty lived about a mile and a half from where I grew up in New he, I lived in New Egypt. He lived across the street in Upper Freehold. So we really didn't know each other until like freshman year. And um I, I remember him I remember him being on his bicycle showing up at the flea market because I grew up, my, my parents owned the Egypt flea market and actually still do. And I remember him showing up there on a bike and, and I don't even remember how we met or what the deal was. And then we just started hanging out together. And um, a lot of things ensued during that time from then on, that's for sure. But uh, he, he was, Scott, Scott's always been that, that real big dude who was always really loud always cracking jokes, always doing something funny and just raising hell for the most part. Yeah. And yeah. we, we drove his father crazy over the years. And his dad was, <laughs> was one of the funniest men you'd ever meet. And, uh, it, it was, we had a good time, man. It was a lot of fun. So let me, let me throw it over to coach Serbies then. I saw I, you shaking your head that you drove, like, what are some of the things that you and, uh, cause I know some of the stories. But well, some of the stories are, you know, I'm, I'm a year younger than uh, Scott and Aaron, but growing up, and you know, Aaron was my hero. He was a year older. We lived in New Egypt together. Uh, low whatever. standards. Low standards, my friend. Yeah, low standards. <laughs> you don't know so much when you're a kid. You don't know when you're a kid. But, you know, when we played football together, we played baseball together. So, we, we were really close knit and we, we carried that on throughout the sports season. Um, I was an outside linebacker. Scott was a defensive tackle. He was also a, an offensive guard. I was a running back. So, you know, for the topic at hand, I, I really want to say this, even though we got detention for it, Scott's got a great ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if we could say that on this podcast. Oh, come on now. You know, He's got a great moon. <laughs> and had a great ass. And, and took me out as a younger sophomore. And junior e easy. And easy. Very bad influence on me. I tried to stop them, whatever they were trying to do. But they're the captains. They're the captain of the football team. They're right, the and they were older than you, so you had to, I, yeah. Hey. So I just want that noted, even though we're here for, you know, he did a very bad thing. I know that. And I would never do that. Scott did a very bad thing, probably on multiple occasions, Definitely. hypothetically. But, I, you know, alleg allegedly, it could have been him. He's got a great ass. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I wasn't there. I've never seen it. I think I think yeah. I've been spared <clears throat> by the grace of God. <laughs> uh, so, I, you know. <laughs> Here's the thing. We know, we know, uh, Scotty, he's a jokester. He's a prankster. Tommy, 
why why was he getting in so much trouble why was he uh involved why why does he have an intimate knowledge of in-house suspension i think basically because uh he just has no filter um he's just gonna tell you what he's thinking what he's thinking which is rare but uh <laughs> just let it all hang out he's gonna come direct and doesn't worry about the consequences just out there to have a good time i mean when i first met him you could tell he was a practical joker i could tell you some of the things he did but once again this was supposed to be like a family thing but uh you know certain things like uh just keeping the team loose um i guess a good way of putting it is getting the younger guys um into the you know swing of things on certain activities that uh be friend upon, but he just kept everybody loose. He was a fun guy. Um, it was just fun to hang out with. You never knew what was going to happen next or what he was going to say, what he was going to do, but that always was just the fun of it. So I guess the question is, was anybody surprised that uh, he, uh, on his very last moment of his high school experience, he had to, he had to leave his mark No surprise. Mark. He, he had to leave a oh, big mark on, on the on the on, on the school. On the school, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Brian, we haven't gotten to you yet. When did you meet? Because you didn't you got moved to Allentown, right? You you didn't grow yeah, up. I met Scott. Yep, I met Scott my senior year. Um it's when I moved to Allentown. Actually I moved to New Egypt, not too far from Aaron and so forth. Uh and then got bussed in or drove into to school. But yeah, I just remember meeting Scott. Um, football practice, summer practices. I think we had two a days then. I don't think we had three a days there, but um, two a days and met Scott and so forth. And we uh, knew right away he was uh, a handful to deal with, uh, a jokester. But at the same token, when it came time to get busy and to to focus on 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 our tasks and, and work on the, on the ball field, he was there. So yeah. he was, uh, he came from both, both angles. He was a great motivator for the younger, younger underclassmen and, uh, really stepped up to the plate. But at the same time, uh, although I only went to Allentown and with Scott for one year, um, of my career, I've been in the last 30 years of therapy to get over. For <laughs> one year. So, um, you know, there's a lot to be said to that. There's, there's, there's a lot packed into that to that one year, and um, and when I just say the one year, it hasn't just been one year. We've all become, you know, we all know that we're lifelong friends, and that's and that's what uh, being a teammate, being a captain, being a part of something bigger that's than yourself is is all about. So that he's the best I, I, big brother. Yep, he's a good big brother. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't uh, know, guys. I was expecting a lot more uh, stories, but I, what I'm gathering is that they're stories that wouldn't necessarily be uh, okay for for this well, G-rated podcast. We're just well, there's, uh, no doubt. there's no doubt. I'm not sure about there's the no we could bring up like things. Go ahead. Well, we could tell our stories in the evening when there's no podcast. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's that. Well, there's yeah, also we'd be showing our age where you know the younger generation would be watching this wouldn't even have any idea what we're talking about. That's uh, true. You know, like if I bring up the fact that you know in football there was the initiation of the possible sit up, which we won't get into. There was um, <laughs> um, Scott was always you know the leader of, and you know back in the day we played mailbox baseball, which hopefully kids don't do anymore because I wouldn't recommend. It. Um. And then I could bring up the fact that Scott had a radar protector in his car that was the size of an old CR, but the kids don't know what CR is. Well, so, and what's a radar detector? I don't know what they is that like Waze? Or a radar detector, that matter, yeah. yeah. Before yeah Waze. I don't know how he saw through the window of his vehicle with that thing on his uh, dashboard. It was so freaking big. I think it was, I always was bringing you know, like radio waves in from the moon itself because it was so big. Whatever. Loved well, it. He, was, he was riding with the moon, so there you go. Yeah. Or hang or hanging. Well, they, on there the was an astronaut. I probably saw him from the moon, actually. 
<laughs> I'm gonna actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Because we can't see everybody, I don't think. And I don't know how this is gonna let's go back to that. I think we were we're done seeing sweet, innocent little Scotty there. <laughs> this is what I'll say about Scott that I know. He yeah, he's a jokester. He got into some fights, right? That's probably a lot of reason why he is because he he had a, he had a no filter, um, but he always stood up. I feel like we're talking about him like he's passed, like he's is not that, no longer with us. Right. <laughs> but uh, he's he was always one to um, defend the underdog, and he oh, sure was. He will say that he hates bullies. Um, and he, a lot of times he was, uh, getting in trouble because he was, uh, quick to use his fists instead of his diplom, diplom, what am I trying to say? His diplomacy. Diplomacy. Yeah. Yeah. Diplomacy. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't really known for that, but, uh, he was, he was, he still is guys. He's not dead. Okay. So let's just put it out there. He's not, he's not just dead to us. <laughs> I mean, anyway what so, are your friends uh, long with them to repair now Kim? you were cutting in and out Tom what we've been friends with them long enough where we're almost at retirement to retire from being friends. friend you know? yeah yeah you know yeah what? we got we got the time in we got That's the time in for sure I, I got more thing. time than all of you some of, some of the things with Scott that that make him who he is and and he hasn't well, probably hasn't grown up like many of us in all that time. So for the high school kids, listen to this, you know, don't be in such a hurry to grow up. Although I'm sure your parents want you out of the house eventually, but uh, don't be in too big a hurry because in time you're, you're, you're going to go back to the stuff you did and think about all of it. But Scott, one thing Scott always has been and is to this day is number one, he's a patriot, right? Totally believes in, in good American values and, and education and, Stuff I never would have believed when we were in high school, he had any intention of following through on, and he did. He went on to become a cop. He went on to become a career firefighter and a paramedic. So, he, you know, big, big military guy. And all things that you would never have expected Threat the Way to be when we were getting in fights and getting in trouble in school and, you know, running from running from uh, Miss Bembry, the truant officer, and the whole nine yards over the years, right? They probably don't even have that anymore. But, you know... You're not allowed to skip school and hang out in the pizza shop and play video games and, you know, pinball and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I'm told. Uh, but I did it all with Scott. So, you know, but he he's still that same guy. He's still that guy that today would, I don't know, you know, about mooning anybody, but he's still that guy that would stand up for the guy who who is being bullied. He would stand up for the the quote unquote geeks or the dorks or whoever it is. He didn't care if you ran with the heavy metal guys, if you were a jock, if you, whatever you were, Scotty didn't care. And he's still that same guy. You know, I've, I've, I've had beers with him recently and it was the same way. So, uh, root beers, right? Root beers. Yes. Root beers. <laughs> this is a high school thing. But, uh, so but he that, is that guy, man. With that being said, Aaron, uh, Tret's getting a bum rap here about this moon. He's done so much good. Right. Over the years. Right. You know, why are they pinpointing him now for this little small deed that he's done over such a long time ago? It may have affected many, many different types of people in different ways. <laughs> but I don't condone that. And certainly he didn't teach me any of those things. Nice. But overall, I think his goods outweigh the bads. Yeah. So I don't, I, go, I guess it, bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Stacey, what? Oh no! I was just making a joke that he the def, goods definitely outweigh the bads, but he got caught for the bad, so now he's going to have he to got pay for, for it. The bad, yeah, he got caught for the moon. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing: if you don't know the story, he did get caught by our assistant principal, Mr. Van Dusen, on the day of graduation, and because it was second nature for Mr. Van Dusen to just say "You're suspended," that's what he told Scott right before he graduated, and of course. Scott graduated and said, see ya, and never, never served his time. And so we are raising money to uh, make sure that Scott is not only captured and brought to justice uh, 
on May 19th to serve his time in, in house suspension. Uh, but we're also raising money to uh, to get him out. So we're raising some bail money and all that money is going to go to the student academic and athletic programs. All of us here uh, met because we were involved in the student programs. So the programs are so important um, to get involved in and to make lifelong friends, as you can see yeah. here. Um, marching band, four years. Marching band. <laughs> marching band, four years. I, we had a great marching band. We really, really did. You guys sure marched did. in New York City, right? For we the sure Macy's, did. Macy's, Macy's Day, Day Parade. Parade. Saint Patrick's Day Parade. Yeah. Wow. That was the best moment of my life. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, but I guess that, you know, we got to wrap this up and, and figure out what are we going to do? Are, are you on Team Free Scotty? from in-house suspension and raise money for his bail money? Or are you on the other side and you are, keep that SOB in in-house. He deserves the time. <laughs> Stacy, where are you? Well, uh, um, I, I love Scott like the big brother I've always wanted. And he's become one of my closest, oldest, bestest friends. But uh, yeah, he's got to serve just a little bit of time. Just a little bit of time. I'm sorry, Scott, but maybe just pay for it. Van Dusen's up there watching and just give him what he wants. Yeah. Maybe maybe a couple hours. Maybe a couple hours, <laughs> yeah. All right, Aaron, what do you get say? In there. Yeah, I think a few hours isn't going to kill him. You know, he's put plenty of guys in jail when he was a cop. So, you know, what the hell? <laughs> and, uh, and I'm sure Van Dusen is looking down at all of us and uh, thinking, wow, they, they're actually successful, you know, like contributing people in society. He never would have believed such a thing. At least he told me that many times. So, yeah, that's it's. Uh, yeah, There's Scotty life served, beyond high school. a little time and then we'll yeah. celebrate when he gets out. That's right. Yeah. It's kind of like the Blues Brothers. We'll pick him up in an old cop car. Yeah. And you know what? Nobody knows who's watching this. And high school knows that reference. You're Look up yeah. the movie, the Blues Brothers. <laughs> you'll, you'll laugh. It, yeah, it Google, Google it. Blues Brothers. So depressing Google right it. Now. All right, Rosie, what say you? Uh, with my past experience, I'd say he's got to he's got to be locked up. I'm, I'm voting for. Oh, so you just stay broke. locked up. The more it's time he's in there, the less time I got to spend with him. <laughs> and uh, you know, my therapist, my, my therapist will, will will appreciate it. Thank you, Serbs. Coach Listen, Serbies. He, he's my teammate. He's my captain. I do as he says. Sometimes people make mistakes, and you got to pay for them. You miss a block, you got to run sprints. You yeah, run a lot of sprints. Up downs, <laughs> Scott. In the whole effing class in 1988. You got to spend a couple hours in the room. <laughs> with his pants on. With his pants with on. Let's pants make that on. clear. Leave pants have to stay on this time. Yeah. And it looks a little bit different today than <laughs> 30 years ago. So, Scotty, you got to do a little bit of time. We're going to be out there. We're going to be supporting you. We're going to be supporting Big Red any way we can. Um, the friends you make now are going to be friends for a lifetime. Stay close mm -hmm. to those friends. The people on this call are my friends for 35 years. Tom does the math. I don't do the math. I'm a linebacker. I run full speed into things. It's about 35 years. So <laughs> uh, moments with your friends. There's going to be more years to come. But Scott, you got to do your time. Take it like a man. Keep your pants on. That's right. All right. But we'll if be I there when he gets out to give him a hug. <laughs> Tommy, our quarterback. Uh, well, basically, um, I think the biggest thing, I think Aaron touched a little bit, just talking to the younger generation, um, I think it would be remiss if we can bring up the fact that during our time there, they almost took away with the football program. Um, and Scott was one of the guys that also helped save that program. And we wouldn't all be great friends now if it wasn't for that program where we spent so much time together, working hard, things of that nature. And I love Scott like a brother. But I also have to admit that he could do some time in there. I think it would be time well spent where he could contemplate, 
you know, all the times he didn't protect my blind side. And I got concussed multiple times and beat up. You know, so maybe if he goes in there, maybe he'll feel regret for not uh, doing a little better job of protecting his quarterback. Yeah. And also, True. clipping a guy 30 yards behind the only touchdown that Chris Servies would have scored. <laughs> That's all. Did you guys get all that? Because you were kind of cutting in and out. But I want to highlight sure. a couple of things. One, uh, I don't know if the kids know that our football program was going to be terminated. It was, it was going to go away. We were, we were not a great uh, winning team. We, we had an, an amazing team in the eighties. Uh, they didn't necessarily win games. And, um, <laughs> but we banded together to save the football program. And Scott was a big part of that. And uh, I, you know, you guys have an amazing program now and um, that's what counts. And then there was something about a, him not blocking a blind side i think i heard <laughs> maybe that's why i was uh couldn't hear you really because it'll beat up the times he got me killed but that's okay i'd let it go obviously <laughs> 35 Tom's years bitter. later Tom's you let it go bitter that he got crushed so many times from his blind side that scott was supposed to block oh uh, okay right. no bitterness well See, i he, mean nobody's he, perfect right i'm a little angry there aaron i, I did sense the bitterness as well Light. Yeah, <laughs> I think that might be because of the concussions. What is that? <laughs> you know, there sometimes it makes you a little angrier, mm. a little more aggressive, something like that. Donna, the one thing to to impress, and since we're talking to to high school kids, is the the lessons that we learned when we were working to save the program because they were the school board was dumping that football program. We didn't win much. It cost them a lot of money. And they were dumping us and and it, it was public outcry that, that really saved it. And it was so many of the students, even students who had nothing to do with football, but just wanted that school spirit kept in the school, wanted homecoming, wanted all that stuff. And um, but I think the lesson learned there is there are things that I learned on the football field, in the practice fields, when we were, you know, baseball, every sport that I played in high school. And lessons that we learned from our coaches back then about not quitting and, and just persevering and, you know, even playing through some some pain, you know, knowing the difference between being injured and being in pain and the whole nine yards and all those lessons. Here I am 35 years later and I've still used them in my career. I did 33 years as a career fireman and retired as, as a chief. And those lessons that I learned from Coach Lito and Coach Petty and Coach Hunt and Coach Banks, and all those guys, uh, and Coach Joe, remember Coach Joe, uh, Joe Roberts, and, you know, Coach Washington, the lessons I learned from those guys, I have carried through my professional life, and some of my personal life to this day, 35 years later, and uh, so for guys that are on that field, or girls that are on that field, wherever, whatever field you're in, whether it's field hockey, or football, or baseball, or track and field, whatever you're doing, you know, in the band, the, the lessons learned, the discipline, the get it done, the friendships, the perseverance, it all comes together. It doesn't seem like it means much when you're 16, 17, 18 years old, but I can tell you, it will carry you through the rest of your life. Been there, done that, still doing that. Can, can I just say that I was in the band, I didn't really understand football too much, but there Neither was something about <laughs> the concussions there was something about cheering that team on and sitting in those bleachers and rooting for you guys and having that bond form of going out there and rooting for you and 35 years later here we all are sitting around talking about it and best years of my life and really wanting to give back to the school that brought us together so we are um i got go ahead was I right with the 35 years? Everybody else is, I just guessed. You were right. Yeah. yeah. Well, 1988 <laughs> is 35 years ago, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm the You're oldest 89. one on this call and I'm feeling older with every second. <laughs> yeah. Well, Chris, it was, for years. us, it was 34 years ago. We're not quite as old right. as the other. I rounded up. It's me. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my round level up. of 35. Yeah. 35 years. 35 and years. Uh, uh. Broken watch. Serves. That's what we're talking about. 
no concussions here. <laughs> I did get hit in the head with a flag, but didn't cause a concussion. <laughs> Serbies tackled Serbies tackled the golf cart once. I saw it happen. That was the worst. Yeah, that's legendary. That was Ed, probably involved. Ed, Vo Ed Vogel. And, that was uh, when you were a freshman, right? Rob backwards. Rob Backus, yeah. Yeah. I was Ralph they, Gart. They taught me a lesson. They taught me a lesson. You get good lessons, you get bad lessons on the football field. Man. Yikes. That's high school. Bottom line is there's life after high school. And what we do, what you do in high school can last last a lifetime. And hopefully it's it's gonna be positive uh, with friendships. We have over 800 members in our 1980s alumni group. Um, and all of us are just loving, re reminiscing and reconnecting. And um, I hope that's that's what's gonna happen with, with the current students too. So any last thoughts before we sign off on the very first and only Free Scotty fake podcast? <laughs> oh, I kind of think we should keep this going. <laughs> Yeah, if we get sponsors, who knows? Who knows? Why not? <laughs> yeah, I could rip on Scott forever. We yeah. could. I know we were very. You guys were very generous. I was expecting a lot, a lot more. We There's so much to say. The statute of limitations. We yeah. don't know legal things ahead of us. All I know is uh, he took us under his wings, um, especially Aaron. And they were a very good influence on me, even though they did very bad things that I didn't know that yeah. I can't. But it's their fault. Scott, you got to do your time and then we'll free you up. But, you know, you, you, you deserve it. Right. You, you do the crime. You got to do the time. But I to sign off, I am on the free Scotty. I think he's done an amazing um, job over the over the last 35 years of of serving our country and serving our um, communities with his fire service and his EMS service and um, his law enforcement service so I think he is truly a good guy that you know he had he had a bad rep he had a he had a long rap sheet but hey all is good when, you know, it's, it's just going to get longer. It's just going to get longer. <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully he's slowing down a little bit. So yeah, open bar at the Elks Lodge. I mean, there's a lot of bad that could happen. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah that's uh, going to be everybody, edited. Everybody thanks you for, you for that, uh, Brian. That's very generous that you rented that whole place out for the event. Very generous. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Brian. That was actually me, but it's fine. Uh, thank, <laughs> thank you, <go>. Donna. <laughs> thank you, Donna. All right, I am going to hold.